I've got this great bass guitar exercise for you today. I'm going to go straight into it. Stick around to the end. I'm going to show you how you can make this more musical and work on some soloing as well. Here's the first bar. That's the hardest bit of the whole exercise because you've got fingers one, two, and four on frets two, four, and six of the D string. I'm half cheating by using this short scale Justin Meldell Johnson Fender Mustang. Love this bass. A full scale bass, the stretch there will be a bit trickier. So be a bit careful with that. Those numbers under the notes represent the finger numbers. Okay, so stick to that. We've got three notes, sort of three note fragments of a scale each time. E, F sharp, G sharp. And this is the rhythm. 16th notes with an eighth note at the end. Then we move to the F sharp and do the next notes, F sharp, G sharp, A. So here I've got fingers one, three, and four. That's in one finger per fret sort of technique there, one, three, and four. Whereas this is extended, the E, F sharp to G sharp. That's where a finger has to come out of that one finger per fret sort of system. No metronome, no drums. I'm just trying to keep everything smooth, trying to avoid a thing where you accidentally fret the note wrong. I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to keep the fingers as close to the fretboard as possible. If I do this, they're quite curled. They're as close to the fretboard as possible. And this is just going index middle all the way. Then we're on the next bit, G sharp. G sharp, A, B, fingers one, two, and four. Move up. Got that same fingering pattern as the first bar. Because the frets are narrower here, it's a little easier. We've got A, B, C sharp. I'll play from the beginning to get to there, and I'll just show you how I'm transitioning. On that eighth note, the first finger is just flying up to the next note. That's the key to good technique on bass, is to have a finger there before you even need it. And we've got B, C sharp, D sharp, same fingering pattern as before, one, two, four. Now here, I'm having to adjust the bass a bit to move it out because I am running out of space here. So I've got C sharp, D sharp, E. How you hold the bass when you play is really important. This isn't the best chair and setup for practice when I'm having to film, but you could put the bass on your other leg and have the, the neck going up a bit more. Just have access to these frets a little easier and keep that wrist nice and straight. D sharp, E, F sharp. This is fingers one, two, four. I've got a little bit of buzz there, so I just want to adjust that. There you go. Now, I didn't do this in the intro, but you can come down as well. It's exactly the same. I won't do the whole thing, but this time we're going in the opposite direction. So we're going like this. Again, when that first finger lands on the eighth note, I'm using my little finger to get to the next note. All this is, is an E 
major scale going on one string. So we've got four sharps in an E major scale, and that gives you these notes. In an E major scale, you have a whole step, followed by a whole step, followed by a half step, and then three whole steps in a row, and then a half step. It's really important to know that pattern. If you know that off by heart, you can really easily find the next notes. We're going up the alphabet anyway with those sharps, you know, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, T sharp, E. And I'm doing all kinds of variations on this in my practice at the moment, just again, to get used to the bass again. Having not played for two weeks, you can really, really feel it. You'll be the same if you haven't played for that long. The key to getting better and getting your touch good and your speed, accuracy, stamina, play all the time. And just for some reason, this is what I gravitated towards. I'm going to show you how to play that now with a drum beat, which you can download below. <laughs> descending version but you can do that as well now 100 beats per minute 16th notes it's very hard so how about halving the speed <laughs> so on or you can get your own drum loop or metronome and just decrease the tempo here it is with a metronome i'll just do a few rounds of it <laughs> So I'm just trying not to speed up or slow down. I'm trying to keep all the notes even in terms of tone and volume as well. So that's the exercise. Download it below, follow it exactly. But here is just the next part of the lesson where I want to break out of a rigid exercise. And I'm just gonna put on the drums and a drone. This is another really good thing to use in your practice. It just makes, it makes it sound a bit more musical. That's what I'm after sometimes. that exercise quite rigidly as written all the way up I felt like I needed to break out of that and this is something I do in practice like this is probably another lesson by the way so I'll just quickly show you this I don't expect you to do what I just did but I'll just explain what I was doing so I've got my scale on one string <laughs> I know the notes really well, not only the patterns and the whole step, half step formula of the scale, but also where the notes are on the fretboard. That really helps if I want to do this. I'm just going from an E second fret D string to an octave higher. I know that pattern really well. That's the note. If we come back down, descend the scale. know all these notes so this is a note learning exercise as well and then what I was doing was just playing the scale in different positions if I start on the seventh fret of the A string that's your one octave pattern that most people know I did something like that as well so there's my root note there's the A the tonic there's the third note of the scale, E, F sharp, G sharp. 
To be honest with you, I know the pattern so well, I'm not really thinking of the note names, I'm just going to the note and I know that fits. And I did that little sequence, hammer on, from the G sharp to the A, and then to the E on the ninth fret of the G string. Again, not thinking about it, just playing this pattern. Moving up to the next note in the scale, and continuing the pattern, moving up again, that kind of thing. I'm not thinking about it too much, I'm just playing a note, hammering on to the next note in the scale, whatever that is, and then going up a fifth from there, right? But just playing notes of a scale and breaking out, having a bit of fun with it, trying to get those fingers moving. If I have some timing component going on behind me, then I know if I, if I go out slightly, I can feel it. It feels really bad. That's why I like to do that. Recording yourself is good. You know, from when I edit these videos back off and cringe a bit because my, I don't um, do takes and takes and takes until I get something perfect. You're hearing my mistakes and my timing issues as we go, but that's good. If you can record yourself, you can adjust those moments when you can feel you're slightly going too fast or too slow. You can relax your breathing. You can focus a bit more, you know, whatever. The more I play, the more I feel I'm getting better. I think I'm going to leave it there, but if you do want me to go into that last bit a bit more, maybe I'll do a complete different lesson on it. But thanks very much for watching, for getting this far. As ever, really thanks for your support. Thanks for liking the video, sharing, subscribing to the channel. It really helps a small channel like mine grow. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.